Hello, crafty friends. This is the Paper Chef. My name is Kimberly Smith. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and this is definitely my favorite paper in this new mini catalog. It is so cute. It's called Just Kidding, and it's a scan and cut user stream. So what I'm going to do is show you the papers, and I want you, as you look at these papers, to see yourself in one or more of these cute little children as their imaginations run wild, and they're having a magical day and a great time. And I'll tell you which one is me. Here's me wearing the glasses, spilling the cake batter all over the floor and being like, ruh row. no big deal, because I'm learning. Okay, here's me as I wanted to be a scientist when I was little, and then I went and studied marine biology. So there's me. I can relate to this little girl with her magnifying glass. Okay. And then I, I remember one of the best memories of kindergarten was playing dress up and having a circus. So this little, I don't know if it's a girl or boy here, this little cute one wearing the bunny slippers all dressed up like the little kindergartner. So I'm going to show you the other side of the paper, which is, you know, pretty cool as well. So you can see here that there are themes on the paper. So I'm going to tell you the themes and then you could tell me which paper you want me to start with for this tutorial. So you have the theme of baking. You have the theme of dress up. Okay, you have outdoors. These are all doing outdoor activities. There's a little girl with carrying her rubber ducky stuffed animal and little duckies walking behind her. Then you have reading, the reading theme. Okay, and then you have animals. And then you have arts and crafts. All right, so there's different tips and tricks depending on which paper you pick. I've cut out all six of these. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the other sides. So there's the other side of these, like nice, nice lines and stars. And then this piece, you're gonna see, if you stick around to the end of my videos, by the way, if you're new here, please go ahead and give this video a like. If you're sticking around, I, I appreciate that. And then this, you're gonna see me use this in a card. At the end of my videos, I show you samples. I've used this card background, this card background, and pieces of these papers. I created Easter cards. I created magical cards, imagination cards. I used five different stamp sets because I didn't get the actual suite. Even though it's my favorite paper, I didn't get the suite in the catalog because I'm trying to be strategic and how much money I spend and I'm using, I'm purchasing suites that I'm actually working on with my workshops online. But I did, I did use this in many ways, and I still may get the suite because this catalog's going to be out for a while. So you can see the coordinating colors are Calypso Coral, Daffodil Delight, Old Olive, Pool Party, Berry Burst, and Fresh Freesia. Okay, so here's the paper. Now there are three characters that you can also cut out with the dies, but there are probably a couple hundred characters altogether. And then here's the stamp set closer up so if you do if you're interested in the whole suite there's the stamp set and the dies the dies have castles and magical you know you can see here's castles and flags and it says you're you sparkle every day and it's your birthday you are amazing so i just absolutely love this so there's my store you can get this now now the best part about this i planned this tutorial a while back because I was doing a designer series paper share and I said, once I know that I have enough paper and I've sent out all my designer series paper shares, I said, I'm, I'm gonna do this tutorial on the scan and cut. I just didn't wanna cut into my pack while I was, you know, trying to be rash in my paper and make sure I had enough. So the, after I did all that, this became a celebration item. Okay, so we get now, during the month of January, the only things you could get for free when you spend $50 at my Stampin' Up! store are the items inside of this book. You can't buy these. You can only earn them. This paper is different in that this paper is not only you can purchase it for $12.50 if you want to purchase it or purchase the suite or purchase whatever you want to purchase, but you can also get this paper for free when you spend $50 at my Stampin' Up! store. This paper became a celebration item. I'm guessing it wasn't selling that well and they made it a celebration item. But I think once you guys see this, 
Oh, no, I think you're going to you're gonna like it. So which one would you like me to do? And I'm just going to also comment while you're... If you don't answer, I'll just do the first I'll just do the first one. So I just restuck my mat. I cleaned it off with hot water and Dawn dishwashing liquid. And then I I scrubbed it really good. It you know, and this is an actual clean mat, and then I restuck it. And I restuck it with something called two-way glue, and I let the two-way glue dry. Okay, now this is something you can get at my Amazon store. Just use the link in the description of this video for my Amazon storefront. And this is one that I did not restick yet. So look how dirty it still is, and it's not. I'm just going to show you the sound. See, when you touch it, it nothing sticks to it at all. So then, when you touch this one, you can hear a sticky sound. So that's what happens after you restick your mat. Okay, I'm getting a vote. I'm getting arts and crafts. I'm getting all of them. Okay, we'll do arts and crafts. This one is. This one definitely has. It's trickier because of some of the paper. So here's the arts and crafts paper. All right. So we're gonna put it down. Now you're going to use your brayer. This is a Stampin' Oak, Brother Brayer. Accessories are also at my store. You can use your stamping brayer as well, but Brother does make a brayer. And we're gonna load that. Now I'm gonna load the paper. And then we're gonna do some things like the pencil trick and stuff. So I'm turning on my machine and I'm just loading. I'll show you the load button in a moment. All right, so. I will focus on just one area. I'm going to focus on, I'm going to try to get this area here. We're going to try to cut out these, these guys. Now this, no matter if you use color recognition mode, which is a disaster for this kind of paper, you would think it would work better because it's color paper. Whether you use color recognition mode or black and white recognition mode, which is black and white is what I'm going to recommend. You must use the pencil trick for this little girl's hair. And if you don't, it's just going to not even recognize it. And her little head gets cut off. Her hair gets cut off. I'm just going, the hair is all just frizzy. So I'm just going around like that and just coloring in that line. The arms seem to work okay. But if you do see light areas without a lot of contrast, you can go ahead and, you can go ahead and try the arms as well. Let me get some, let me get my eraser. Let's use my, I shall use my electronic eraser. which I know I just have here because I was just using it. All right. All right, so whenever you see like areas that are really light that don't contrast well with the, the paper, you wanna fill those in with your pencil. So that should be good. Now, the idea is we want the whole outer part to be scanned in as one. Okay, for this little girl, this is a tricky paper too. For this little girl, you have to go like this on her artwork. And just that little part of her artwork there. The rest of her is very good contrast. This one, this paper disappeared, the blue paper. And so did this white paper or it's cream color vanilla. So you want to go like that and like that. Actually, it doesn't really matter because we're going to keep this as part of the this is going to be part of the, I did go ahead and do her little sandal just to be sure. And her hair is like light at the edges. So if you want that to be outlined, it'll, it'll, it'll connect to the dark part, but the out, the other part will work just fine. Now this one was very tricky. This one I also relate to holding the little Valentine, but the problem with this one is the little feet, his little feet, there's white parts. So whenever you have gaps, you can't scan those parts. Okay, so the gaps are going to not be good contrast. So the feet get cut off. And then the other thing that happened to this one, um, let's see, a couple of things happened on this one. We're going to get to try it out, though. We can try it out and fix it or just cut out the ones. We'll go ahead and do her again. All right. So all I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hone in on this area. This one might get cut off because it's so close to the edge, but if, at least we can cut out these guys. We'll be doing fine. All right, so let's try it. So we're now going to turn out. I'm going to turn out the light, so you can see this screen really well. All right, so when you turn on your scan and cut, you are going to see. And let me just go ahead and move my camera over. 
Move my machine back. You're going to see pattern and scan. You're going to, because we're scanning pattern paper, we're going to, even though there's patterns that are built in, this is a very beginner tutorial, okay? We're going to scan in, we're going to use scan, but we're not using one of the built-in patterns. These are built-in patterns from your machine. We're not using that. We're scanning the paper. So we're going to scan. Now, because we're going to directly cut these out, we're not saving any of our shapes. We're not saving anything. We're going to select direct cut. Next, we're going to select where do we want to temporarily store the data. We want to store it on our machine. If your wireless is set up, the other option was for wireless. We're only going to scan in the 12 by 6 area. This is an option with the SDX 125 machine or any XDX 125, any SDX model, I should say, has this option, 12 by 6 or 12 by 12. We're going to select 12 by 6. If you're using a CM model, you're just going to have to scan the whole page because you don't have this option. Now, don't use the color recognition mode because it takes a real long time and it gave me worse results. I've already tried it for this paper. It doesn't work as well as black and white. So we're going to keep it on black and white recognition mode and click select OK. And then we're going to select start. And it's going to scan in the patterns that we want to cut out. And it there's my sometimes my wire gets in the way here. I'm going to put that under I'm going to put that under my mat back there. OK, we're going to select OK. And it did a great job on the ones that I did it, except for the face of this little boy. So we're going to go ahead and first I'm going to zoom into the area we want and so make a selection. Next, I'm going to ignore. Oh, let's go back. I got to make sure I have a little bit extra area with that foot there. OK, next, I'm going to ignore object size. I'm going to ignore objects that are about up to one inch. And this little boy's face isn't going to cut out, so we're going to have to delete that and go back to it. We'll fix it. So don't delete anything bigger than an inch because you're going to be deleting. If you ignore object size, things that are bigger than an inch, you're going to start ignoring the very thing you're trying to cut out. So let's say OK. So we've ignored object size. So first way to get rid of things you don't want is to create a selection. Second way to get rid of things you don't want is click on ignore object size. The third way to get rid of things you don't want after you click OK, is to go to Edit. And we're going to go ahead and delete that whole piece because we're going to fix that, that piece there. And we're going to instead, we're going to just edit it and push Trash. We're going to delete that piece. And we're going to just go ahead and put an outline distance of 0 0.04 around our things. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Here's my, here's my pile. OK, what that looks like is you have a little white outline around the different things that you cut out. See that little white outline? That's what you want. That's why you're putting an outline distance of 0 0.04 around your objects. So click OK. Click OK. And then we're going to select Cut. And we're going to cut. I'm going to say hi to whoever's here, so be sure to check in as I'm cutting these. Now, as it's cutting, it's doing something with the auto blade technology. It's determining the depth of the mat in relation to the depth of the paper. And I don't need to set the blade depth. But if you do have a CM model, you would have to set the blade depth. In this particular one, I don't have to set it. All right, so we have here, joining us this evening is Phil Ham. Nice to see you. Thank you. She said the paper's cute. Trying to decide if I want to order this for celebration. Oh, it's a great paper for celebration. You're, you're getting a free item, so it's a no-brainer. For each $50 you spend, you get a free item. So like this is a good one to choose because where do you see all the cute things you can do with it? And it's going to make so many people happy. Hello, Kathy from Backyard Stamper. I checked out your card tutorials this evening and they were very awesome. Hello, Linda from Stamp Cut and Create. Thank you for picking paper. No, Cynthia, I haven't done the bird yet. One at a time. Give me a chance. I'm only human, but we'll get to the birds. Okay. So, hello, Cynthia. Hello, Becky from Kentucky. Thank you for sharing the video, Becky. You're a gem. Linda, thanks for being one of my channel members. You're awesome. Thank you. Hello, Janet. And hello, Rose Garibaldi. And hello, Hilda, Lisa, Brenda. All right, let's 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 stop saying hello and do some erasing, and we'll get back to those, you guys. Okay. Woo, that came out nice. All right, so let's do this first. I'll, I'll just do this first, and then I'm going to pick up... Oh, I love the sound of a sticky mat, don't you? I'm going to just do, do some erasing first, 
and then I'll fix that paper and we'll go back because we, we never want to leave something. Everything can be cut out. There is nothing on this earth that's a piece of pattern paper that can't be cut out with either the acetate trick, the pencil trick, the tape trick, with some kind of trick. However, some things are not worth your time and effort to cut them out. But there's nothing we can't cut out with the scan and cut as long as it's paper. So what you want to do is use, use an eraser to erase the marks and it's very much easier. It's so much easier to do this while it's still stuck on your mat because then it doesn't get all over the place, your little shavings. I'm just gonna use some washi tape and, or painter's tape and clean it up. Clean up the erasers because you don't want them to end up in your machine. All right, so there, cleaning up all the eraser marks. So see how easy that is? And, well, you'll see it in a minute. I just like to do this. I've, I've had other ways of doing it, but it's so much easier to clean up the eraser bits while they're all attached to this sticky mat because everything's flat. And if I lift it up, then I'll get little eraser marks all over, eraser pieces all over my scan and cut mat. We don't want that. Now never erase with your red eraser from the back of a pencil. The tools that I use, I try to put in my Amazon store and you can support this channel by not only not skipping advertisements, because that's how the channels, that's how creators make a few cents here and there. You can not skip advertisements, but you can also just, if you're shopping on Amazon, it doesn't cost you any extra to use my little links to my store. And then you get recommended of the products that I'm using instead of saying all the time, like, oh, like, where's the wobble spring from? Like, I spent a long time putting a lot of the things I use in that store. I'm looking for my little spatula. All right, I do have a little spatula that comes with the scan and cut, but I can't find it, so I'm just going to use my little spatula. Oh, I love it. I'm just double checking that there's no eraser marks. There's a little piece on her hair. Love, love, love. All right, so here's what it looks like. Awesome. We'll go ahead and do this one. So we're going to we're going to rescan that other page. So we're going to just go in there and just show you these perfect outline distance. If you're not getting even amounts of white space on the right side as you are on the left side, these are perfectly aligned. Then you need to do a couple things. One is watch my tutorial on scanning, cutting, position adjustment, and aligning your machine. Okay, another is to restick your mat because if the, the stickier your mat is, the less the paper will move around. And third, and so aligning the machine, resticking your mat, making sure that these, these little rollers are cleaned. I have, in, I have entire tutorials on how to do maintenance on your scan and cut. So you can do maintenance, Get it tuned up. All right. Happy with this. Oh, I just got to erase that one. So now we have lots of cutouts. Now I did a, I did all of six pages yesterday. And it did take me over an hour, but I didn't stand there. I got hundreds and hundreds of things, of cutouts. and But I didn't stand there for the whole hour. I was doing other things. As it was cutting, I was standing next to it. And I also cut out the whole pages at once. So just to give you an idea how much time it takes. All right, so to remove things from your mat, you're gonna lift up, you can either lift up your mat and get under there with a spatula, or you can bend your mat. When you bend your mat, oops, sometimes you bend your mat and it stuff comes up, it's easier. Doing arts and crafts. All right, and now you get that one out. And now we just want to hone in on the one that didn't work and we're going to fix. We know that the right side worked. She was all outlined perfectly. The hearts were outlined perfectly. This boy's face was not. So we had, I guess I'm going to call that an 80% success rate because out of the, we only selected this area. Four out of five came out, 80% success rate. I've been having about an 80 or 90% success rate on these papers. And all I have to do is after I cut out the first few, is go back 
and outline the parts that didn't get recognized. I don't need to worry about the hair because the hair was recognized just fine. It's just the skin. Why? Because the skin doesn't contrast. The color doesn't contrast with the background. All right, I'm just going to go back. Now, whenever you're scanning, you should always turn out your out. And you, it's okay to have an overhead light on. I'm going to hit the home button. Delete all patterns, scan, direct cut, save it to the machine, and start again. You don't want to have lights shining in the side of your machine. Or they will mess up your scanning. But it's okay to have the light on above your head. Just not, like I have a ring light, so I didn't, want to, I didn't want to have that shining in. Okay, so it looks almost good. It got into the face a little bit. So now let's zoom in and try to fix it. Make a selection. Ignore object size. Ignore small objects. So it got rid of the stuff inside his head. Hopefully I can get the outside of the head. And outline distance, see if it'll fix it. Yes, okay. So let me show you what happens when you... I'm going to zoom in here. When you have a problem like that, like it, it selected his eyes and it went inside. First, I ignored. If you don't see the hair was selected, somehow there wasn't a full outline around his, around his head. But when I go ahead and put that outline distance, right, it seems to fix everything. Now, I'm not sure if it got the girl's arm or not. So I'm just going to zoom in and see if it got her arm. Nope, it didn't get her arm. Okay, so we're almost, we almost, what I'm going to do is just fix it, right? Because we don't want to be defeated because her, her arm is not going to get cut out. Like I said, there's nothing we can't cut out with a little pencil trick. I noticed that it just has her shorts and no arm because the arm doesn't contrast and probably this bow up here is not going to contrast. Okay, so this is a little string. I'm not really worried about this string because... You don't really need the string, okay? So, I mean, the string doesn't need to cut out. All righty. Zooming back out. Scan, direct cut, da, da, da. I'll just do like one more, after this, I'll do one more different piece of paper, and then I'll show you all the samples of all six papers. And that way, so if you think of what paper you want to do next, we have, while it's doing this, we have outdoor activities, reading, baking, dress up, and pets. Okay, so there's six pieces of paper. So whatever paper you pick, I'll do because we can do any paper. It's the same process, but there's just a few more tips and tricks for each paper. And then I'll just show you all the papers and all the tips and tricks. I'm just ignoring object size. I'm doing the outline distance. This is all review, right? It's all review, everything we've done. Selecting, cut, and starting. So when you have, when you have a, when you have a scan and cut doing an auto blade, it's determining, it's taking, if you ever look at the top of your mat and you see all these little nicks, all these little scratches on top of your mat. I can go ahead and turn on the light now because it doesn't matter because I'm already scanning. See all these scratches all over the top of your mat? That is normal. There's scratches all over the top of your mat. Every time the auto blade works, it scratches the top of your mat, and then it and then it and then it goes and goes into the paper or material that you're cutting, and it determines the differential, the difference between the two. That's how it knows what blade depth to assign itself because it's it's using the difference between the little cut it made and the paper. So there is that is how the auto blade works. But if you don't have an auto blade. Because you, you can't set the blade depth on an STX machine. So if you don't have an auto blade, you're going to use the blade depth. You're going to have to set it, like on a CM model. And I know all kinds of people watch me from all over the world on the scan and cut. So I'm just letting you know, if you have a CM, if you have a CM model, then you're going to set your blade depth to three when you're cutting Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper. Okay, fixing her arm. It just cut out beautifully. I'm very happy with this cutout. My battery's going dead on this little. Eraser. All right.
Now, you can either cut out the whole paper or you can decide that some of your paper, I love the sound of a sticky mat. Like this paper, it makes, I think this was my favorite one for using for card backgrounds. So I didn't cut out the whole paper. I might've cut out like down to here. And then I took this and made a few card backgrounds out of this back of this paper. Some of it does rip a little bit if the mat is sticky, but this is a great card background. And again, stick around because you'll see it. So I see myself and this little girl doing arts and crafts. Now this would make a little adorable little Valentine. I already have a shaker card for hubby with the pandas, but I'm thinking that would make an adorable Valentine card as well. So maybe, or you could put it on a gift topper. I mean, it's just, it's just adorable. All right. So now you said pets. Let's see what anybody else voted. Pets, pets. Hi, Caroline Babcock. And thank you for being a channel member. Hello, Michelle Bruner. Pets. Phil Ham says pets. Kathy says baking. Oh, no, no, Lisa. We're not going to fuzzy cut these. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine how much time? No, no. It does uh, pencil marks. Okay. To avoid pencil marks, there's another trick. So say you have four packs of paper, right? And you were going to, you know, do this, like four, four packs of paper. Let me just explain this for a second. And you put this down and you had four, four packs of paper, meaning two of each sheet, because each pack of paper comes with two sheets. As long as you line it up there and you scan in the paper and then you cut it out, then you could just go bloop and put the next paper down and cut it out again and put the next paper down and cut it out again. So that only the first one would need the pencil marks. Because after that, every single paper is going to be in the same spot. As long as you put it right in between the black lines. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty awesome. Okay, we said pets, not baking. So let's find the pets. Okay, here's the pets. Now, if you want the bunny, the bunny cut out by itself. But if you want the bunny to be part of this little girl's. Like, otherwise, the girl cut out by herself. So this is the tip and trick. One is her sandal. And one is the bunny. That's one tip and trick for this paper. Let me get the brayer. So anyway, you don't really have to use pencil marks. And then also, once you get, if you have a lot of shapes and you're going to cut out, say you're going to do like wedding party favors or something, and you had like so much paper and you need to cut out the same kind of flowers over and over, you could do what's called scan to cut data and like save the data and keep putting the sheets in as well. But I don't save any of this data because it's pattern paper, so I don't save any shapes. There's just so many ways to get around using pencil trick, but... We're using it now. So I'm going to connect the bunny so that she is part of the... So she has the bunny. Now, the reason I'm doing that is if you don't connect the bunny... Let me show you a sample, right? If you don't connect the bunny with the pencil, the bunny's going to cut out separately. She's going to be laying there holding a carrot, and it's going to look silly. So you want her... And then also you want to... You don't really have to mess with her sandal, but it is pretty light, so I just put a little bit on the end of her sandal there. All right. So now let's, anyway, let's outline the bunny because the bunny is white and there's not enough contrast between the bunny and the background. Anyway, it's a lot easier to erase a perfectly cut out line than to try to make cut perfectly cut out lines. Like, you know, with brain, you know, just as far as brain power goes, like I think it's just, this is so much easier. Let the machine do this beautiful job cutting out every little nuance and every little edge and then erasing is easy for you. All right, so that's the only trick for the girl. If you want her sandal to be, it depends on how, see, I did, when I connected the line behind her sandal, it made a line there. Otherwise, the line might go in underneath the sandal. Other than that, 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 that one should be good. Next, we want to do this little boy. His arms are light compared to the background. His ear, his face needs to be outlined. Not his hair, just his face, just his hand. If you want him to attach to the dog, if you want, you can kind of, it might go in there a little bit under, but if you just want it to kind of outline the outside of the, you just go like that, touch it down to the dog like that. And then it won't get in there and try to cut out this little inner area, which is always like another point of possible failure if it tries to get in there and cut out this little section. It's Remember, the scan and cut is, if you're not familiar with the scan and cut, the way it works is it just goes around the edges of things. Okay, I'm just outlining her skin. I don't remember if I had to do, I don't think I had to do her hair. Just, I think her arm. Let's look. 
I'm going to see if I see any pencil marks. I don't see any pencil marks on this. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't even have to do her hand. There's no pencil marks there. They're hard to see, but I can tell if I did, and there's nothing there. So really, that one was easy. So then the little boy with the cat, I think he was fine the way he was. This one was a hard one. So we, what we'll do is we'll ignore this girl's hand and see if it recognizes without us outlining it. But this little boy was with the bird on his head. Definitely has really light skin, so you have to like definitely outline him. But, I mean, it's funny, right? Of course, it reminds me of Alfred Hitchcock, the birds, in a way. So that's kind of creepy. But it's it looks like he's having frolicking in the fun. So I did put that on some cards. I thought that was kind of fun. All right, so we have this. This paper's already loaded. I mean, the mat's already loaded. So we can just now get started again. Start a new, new little round. Okay, back to the home screen. We're starting a new piece of paper. So scan. Right, direct cut, save it to the machine. 12 by six, black and white recognition mode. Start, okay, this is a review of what we showed you before. Okay, so Lisa, if you're only cutting one sheet, then you know you just, that's okay. Then that's even gonna, I wouldn't bother doing all the tricks if you're just cutting one sheet. So yes, we did need to outline her hand. Because look at that. I'm going to show you. Look at look at that. It went right into her face and got her glasses separately. So that is good to know. So you do you should. Okay, here's the little girl. Oh, I can I can turn my light on for a second to show you this. There's the little girl. You do need to outline her hand. If you don't, it went it didn't even see this as an edge. It went straight in and started outlining her glasses. Before you mess up any of your paper, guys. Right? Check check this here, oops, I better turn this off for the glare. Check this screen and zoom in because be otherwise you're gonna have, trust me, I know, look at, look at the little girl with one leg because I didn't check that it didn't get her shoe. I have a whole, I have another girl with one leg. This is me, one leg because I spilled the bowl. This is the one I relate to, glasses, dark hair, and spilling all the batter over the floor. So like that's one of the ones I relate to, but she has one leg. It's okay to have one leg. I'm just saying that it just kind of, just double check that you outline the pieces. I'm going to use that. And all you got to do is like overlap some critters. I mean, not critters, some people. All right. Anyway, clicking okay. So that little doggy, um, I'm going to just go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and get, let's see. I want that little. Okay. The problem with this one is. Let me see if I got, if, if it was above the six inch mark. Okay, yes. I think I can get that with the six inch mark. All right. See how this bunny was not outlined and it's not going to come out? All right, well, let's just go ahead and ignore object size. Okay, ignore things about an inch. Get rid of some things. And then we want to put an outline distance around things. Now, what do we have left after doing all that? We have left... This girl did come out okay, after all. So without eraser marks, I think her I think her arm is in the picture next to her face, okay? We have a girl without a bunny, so we do need to get rid of this girl because she has no bunny with her, whereas this girl has a bunny, and I think the rest are good. So let's go ahead and edit. Get rid of the... Oh, to edit, if you want to toggle between things on your mat, you're going to use this button to toggle the selection. So I like all these. One, two, three... Four, five, six. I mean, we have really good ones here. So let's just only delete her because her bunny's not attached to her and we have to outline the bunny. And then let's cut out the rest. We're going to do that outline distance of 0 0.04. Make sure I did that. And then we're going to cut. All right, now for this piece of paper, we're going to go one step further. It's going to take two minutes, which means it's less than one. I mean, more than one minute, but less than two because it rounds up to the nearest minute. So it's going to cut. Sometimes I give it a little rub while it's cutting. And we're gonna do something to this next batch, which is adding another layer. We're gonna add this layer of black paper around it. And that's gonna be really cool for your card projects. While, if you're gonna put something on a wobble spring, it gives you a reinforcement for the back of something. And it's also good for just adding dimension to your projects. To do that, 
It's good to have basic black cardstock in a 12 by 12 format. I have a lot of this 12 by 12 basic black cardstock because I can just put it on there and do some layering or whatever coordinating color you want. But I usually use, I tend to use black. Now I can turn on my light. It doesn't matter now because it's not, I'm no longer scanning. It's only when the scanning, it can be messed up when the light shines through your scanner. Now, after that, after it scans and you start cutting, you can have as much light as you want from whichever direction you want. Michelle's telling me how much money she has saved by using my tutorials. Lisa. Okay, so you only cut one sheet and use the other for backgrounds and card making. Yeah, that's, that's all you need is a few of anything, like a few. I'm calling these embellishments. So these are each embellishments. I need a few for each card. And I'm going to give you other ideas on what to do with them. So yes, cut one sheet, use the rest for... Use the rest for your card making in the backgrounds. All right, so we need we definitely have to erase the bunny. All right, there's the there's her little. Oh, why am I erasing? You might want to you might want to you might be asking yourself why are you erasing those little marks you can't even notice on the bottom of a sandal? Well, because the artist we have we have graphic artists and fine artists that make the paper at Stampin' Up, and they take pride in their work and they come out with a certain design. Right, so it's it's just time to change this eraser. And because they, you know, they take pride in their work, I just want to erase it and make it go back to the way that the art was intended. That's all. So that's why. Always erase your pencil marks, even if you don't think they matter and you can't really tell they're there. Just erase them and have everything go back to the way it should be. All right, and let's see, this little hand on the dog. What I like is that we didn't even need to really do this one because the other one that I didn't put any marks on is perfect. So can you see that, this one? Look at that, I didn't put any marks on that and it cut out perfectly. So this one is okay without putting marks on it. But you know, you can, sometimes it's better safe than sorry, but you also want to experiment. I, like this girl, she, she doesn't really need marks because this one I didn't put any marks on. It's just down here I didn't put any marks on her. This one I used the pencil trick. So in other words, it just recognized her anyway without the marks. But it wasn't, it doesn't work unless you put the outline distance on it. So if you don't put pencil marks and you're getting all these jagged edges and everything, it's because you're not using the outline distance of 0 0.04. When you do that, it's very forgiving. And it helps fix all of these issues that you have with your paper. So that's another case for using outline distance. When you use an outline distance, it automatically fixes a lot of imperfections in the way that the things are cutting out around the edges. So no eraser needed, no eraser needed for her. I erased this one, this one, this one, and I think there's a little part on... Nope, I didn't... I just I see one little part, one little mark and I'm good to go. This little part right here, see? Wait, right there and right there. All right, so I'm happy with these. Now, we're going to leave these on the mat. Not these on the mat, but we're going to leave the mat uh, loaded. I mean, not leave these on the mat. And we're going to put, I'm not, I'm actually just showing you something now. I'm going to take these off the mat. But what I want to, what you want to do is for the next layering part, you want to put this paper, this cardstock, wherever these are laying. So that's why you leave them there for a minute so you get your, like, I don't need to put the paper at the very top of the page because this is not really touching the top of the page, etc. So you just kind of look at where these are and that's where you're going to put your black paper or your next paper for layering. Somewhere is a scan and cut spatula, which would work a little better than this, I think. It's much wider. 
but we have a spatula on the take your pick tool, so we're all good. So we're gonna put those up there. Oh, let's look, yay. Yay for embellishments and fun things. All right, now let's go and put this here. When you use black cardstock like this, it's thick stamping up cardstock. You're going to use a blade depth of five if you're using an auto blade technology, a regular blade for a CM model. We're going to just let the auto blade determine the depth, but you're going to use a blade depth of five. All right, we're going to now go back one step. And we're just going to, we're not going to erase the screen, so you only go back one step. And where you see the outline distance, we're going to increase it to 0.12. Okay, now that one did mess up. So that's okay, we're gonna erase that one. We're not gonna cut that one out. So 0.12, we're gonna go edit. Otherwise, the whole face is missing. So that's why the case for the pencil trick. Delete that one. The rest, you can see, are all really good. We have five good ones. 0 0.02 worked better than 0 0.08 for this project. I usually only use, I'm just gonna cut again. Just cut again. I'm just doing the same exact thing, just making bigger shapes. I usually use an outline distance of 0 0.04 for the white, and then I use, whoa, don't get stuck in there. <laughs> you don't want stuff to get pulled in, otherwise you have to use another one of my tips and tricks to try to get the stuff out that got stuck in your machine. But if you do get stuff stuck in your machine, it's no big deal, I have a tutorial for that. Happened to me yesterday, I had tape stuck in there. Anywho, this is a 0 0.04. Usually, if I'm just doing like a gold outline or something on a flower, I'll do a 0 0.08. But these ones, experiment, experimentation showed me that these look so much cuter with a 0 0.12 outline distance. I mean, look how much cuter they look with that big, bold outline distance. Now, if you think I have a lot in my little tray, where do you see how many I use for my projects already? And I'm going to be using these for projects and for other things. Hello, Anna. Thank you for watching from Victoria, Australia. Awesome. Okay, Lisa likes the light trick about not shining the light in sideways. All right. I'm turning back on the light. Okay, they look like a bunch of blobs, right? Now, these should not be far away because you want to match these up. They do match up to those, meaning you don't want to just throw them all in a box because... They're not all cut equally. Okay, I'm just gonna just get I'm just gonna show you what I mean. So like let's say this little guy fits right on there, right? But then the other little guy, this looks like the right one. I mean it could it could be either one should fit on there, but what I'm saying is one fits on there more perfectly than the other. Okay, so let's see. You want to match them up so that the right ones are lined up. I'm just, I'm just looking at which, I mean, they should be correct. Okay, so you want to line these up and then and usually what I do is when I'm taking them off the mat, I stick them somewhere. I, I stick like the one, if I have two of the same character, I put one on the table over here and one on the table over there. When I pull these off the mat, I know which one to match up. Okay, there's only one of these, so that's going to match up. So I'm just going to put it, you know, together, match it up. And then the little girl with the bunny. And then I'm just using some dimensionals behind there. That's all. To layer these up. And that's it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'm, I'm only going to layer one up to show you, and then we're going to show you the projects. And I'll, I'm going to point out a couple tips for other papers. All right, so this, this is how we do it. 
Okay, and if you want to use Wink Estella, make it glittery, that's all good too. That's all there is to it. All right, let me show you what, hold on, let's put these. That's what layering looks like. Any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm going to click OK and unload my mat to get rid of, to get some space. Okay, we have done these papers. We have done... All right, there are six papers. And you can go ahead and cut the ones and then cut a few out. Save some, save some of each paper for your, for your backgrounds and your projects. Maybe this one, you don't want to cut out too much of the background because look, it has all this really cool background pieces. All right, for this one, you need to connect the frog if you want the frog to be attached to the bucket. Otherwise... This is all going to cut out as one object, and these little lines won't cut out, so you need to use the pencil to connect the frog. I cut out my ducks separately. I actually ignored object size. My ducks disappeared, and I ended up cutting them out with scissors, so you'll see the ducks. But if you want the ducks to all cut out with the girl, you're going to have to put a line around the ducks. Okay, this boy's face. No, oh, actually, there's enough contrast there. It was the little boy in the hula hoop was fine. This one was fine. Yeah. All of these were fine, except this girl's little outfit was white. It's white, so you have to outline this little girl's outfit that's pushing the wagon. And the little boy fishing, I might have done a little bit with this shirt to get it to outline. Okay, so that's just a couple tricks for that paper. And then, you know, save the back. Okay, for this paper, just these light faces, outline the light faces. And in, wherever you see the skin next to the skin and the legs. Okay, this, uh, this side of the books, I did outline these, all the white parts of the books, just the sides of the books. And this little boy's arm, okay, for the reading page. Then I saved some of the green for the other side, for the cards. And then this one, if you want her to cut out with the bowl, let me show you. Although I had this part down, but then, of course, I didn't get her leg. So here's a couple variations of this. So we have, all right, so we have the girl with a separate bowl, which is fine. You don't have to have the bowl. If you do nothing, the bowl will cut out separately, as long as you have a pencil mark on these little bits. So otherwise, these little splashes aren't going to cut out with the bowl. So as long as you put the little pencil mark with the splashes, you'll get this piece separate and this girl separate. Then you can use them for different things. Then you can put the, you can put the bowl next to anybody. You can put the bowl next to any of the other like scenes. And she can be in an outdoor scene that way. So that's fine, but she still has the look of, uh-oh, right? Now, if you do nothing, there you go, but then she, her arm, I missed her arm from not using the pencil trick, and then over here I missed her leg, okay? But I got the bowl. So I did the pencil trick there, but then I didn't do her leg. So this was just some experimentation, and then this is like, this one came out pretty good. Okay, like that. So that's just an idea. Okay, the popcorn boy. Okay, okay, I'm done with that page. So I need the tips and tricks. Okay, for baking, I told you. Oh, the little boy. Also, this little boy, like, see how there's a white part of his shirt? So just use the pencil next to his shirt, wherever, and on his little sleeve. He's eating a cookie. And then this little cupcake, the top of the cupcake got knocked off. Or the top of the flour, or the sugar. Scooping out some sugar. So outline the top of this sugar scoop. Not the outfit, just the scoop of sugar, and that's fine. And the top of her little thing gets cut off. See, look, if you don't use the pencil trick, it's still cute, though. It's still adorable. But look, if you don't do the pencil trick, the top of her spoon gets cut off. All right, so that's a trick, trick, trick. And there should be one more sheet with the little outdoors thing. The popcorn, if you, don't, if you want the pieces of popcorn in the picture, I kind of also didn't really pay attention at that point. See the popcorn? You have to outline the popcorn. Otherwise... The popcorn is cut off, which is fine. This is still a good embellishment. If you want to reinforce your embellishments, you're just going to cut out another whole set of embellishments with black on the back instead of doing the outline distance like I did because sometimes I put them on wobble springs and I wanted them to be reinforced. So I put, them, I put a, a black background on them. So that's just another tip for you. Okay, and we have one more. Oh, yeah, that's a piece that came out. Okay, this piece with the outdoors. Okay, how tall are they? Well, well, this is a 12 by 12 sheet, so I mean, we can see how tall they are. We'll have, to, we'll have to check with the mat in a moment. We'll check on the mat. All right, for this one, you need to do this boy's hands because they're very light. 
this boy's face, this girl's arm. One of her ponytails got cut off. That didn't work because of the, I don't know why, maybe the little gap in the ponytail. One time, one of the, the little slippers got cut off. But this one was easy. I didn't have to do anything, but I think I, did, I missed the ladybug. So the ladybug was, I could cut out the ladybug still and put it on my card, but the ladybug, I ignored the object size. And because I didn't use the pencil, the ladybug wasn't cut out with the little girl. So that's just something to consider. Okay, and then that's a cute background too. So those are your tips and tricks for each paper. And now you want to know what size. I mean, just look at the relative size of the paper. It's 12 by 12. And you have the little things are two and a half inch. Like she's two and a half inches high. Okay, she's two and a half inches high. This one's one and three quarters inch high. I mean, they're different sizes. Two and three quarter inch high. All right, so they fit onto cards and things like that. So let me show you how fun these are. My husband is a teacher and he does teach pre-K children and he does teach special needs children too. So like this is going to be so fun to put all over the bulletin board because every kid is going to see, like just like I see myself, here's a girl carrying books. Or no, she's more like her with her goofy hat. I like this one with her cute little hat. They're going to see themselves. I like eating popcorn, right? Listening to headsets. So these are good bulletin board embellishments. And I turn, I use my sticker machine, again, linked on Amazon, my sticker machine to create stickers. I just rolled them through the sticker machine. So all of these can just stick onto things. And then sometimes I added backgrounds. Sometimes I added point one two outline distance. And sometimes I added just no outline distance and just reinforced them. I mean, they're, they're just fantastic. They're just great pieces. And I'm just going to keep on making some. And there's Read Across America Week. And they're always, like, this This week was the letter L and the color pink. And, I mean, every week there's a different bulletin board, right? And there's different, and then there's Read Across America where there's an event at every school and they do. So these little reading ones are going to be great. That You know, with little sayings that say read every day. Okay, so these are just, and you saw me put this one. So there's another one I could put in there. This could be Easter cards. So let me show you other things because you're like, well, maybe you don't know any teachers. Everyone should know a teacher. I mean, teachers are the backbone of our country. So hopefully you all can think of a teacher to give some of these to. And they'll be very appreciative because teachers have to decorate all the time and keep fresh bulletin boards and standards and everything on their boards. So they're going to be so happy. There's another sticker. To have lots of embellishments. That's one thing. But then... The other thing is just make cards. I mean, just make cards and give them away to people. Like, it's fun. I'm going to give sets of cards probably away because I think these go nice as a set. So I just want to show you kind of where I got these stamps from. And, like, for, for example, a couple of these stamps. This is a free stamp set where I got the... I didn't buy the, the bundle that came in the catalog. See, the little boy with popcorn is your son. See, I knew everybody. See, Michelle's relating to somebody. Hello, Lita from Manchester, UK. Nice to see you. Hello, Sue. Sue B. Lisa loves the scene sheets. Uh, Marilyn likes the layering with black. And Pat said she learned something in each of my tutorials. Thank you, Pat. Anna's here from Victoria, Australia. All right, cool. So this heartfelt hello stamp set is one of the free things you can get during celebration. And again, you don't need the whole suite of products. Just buy or just get the paper for free. And then use the heartfelt hellos and you have instant cards. Look how happy these kids are. I mean, doing the hula hoop. I just cut this this cut off because one of my things didn't cut out right. And I see that I didn't erase the pencil mark on this little girl. See, sometimes when I show you guys stuff, I notice things. I notice things on my cards. I just have to fix it right away because I won't later. So we got a boy eating a cookie, the girl doing arts and crafts, and... The, and then the little boy doing a hula hoop. So great card for a teacher, blank inside, Asia afternoon, one of the coordinating colors. Okay, so now you know that that is the heartfelt hello stamp set. Great scene background with the sliding board. Enjoy your day with the deckled rectangle. These are both deckled rectangles. Asia afternoon, gorgeous grape. Uh, here's a crushed carry card, gorgeous grape layer, poppy parade layer, and gorgeous grape ink. Okay, so I'm, I'm coordinating all the colors, and then you got the little ducks following her 
in front, she's walking in front of the sliding board and I cut out the ducks with scissors because I ignored the object size. But I might go back and find that ladybug if I can find her and put that in some of my cards. All right, these two, enjoy, grateful for the everyday magic in you. Okay, look, little magic. I cut off one of the little slippers here with the scan and cut. It went under here like this. So I put the bird, the boy with the bird on his head hides the slippers. So you can't see that mistake. I'm just telling you about it. And then you have the girl doing arts and crafts, which again, I can relate to. That's me doing my little arts and crafts. I mean, how fun, right? And then see how you can use the different layers. This is the boy with the flowers and then the girl waving over at him with the dog. But look, only this one needs the shadow. Not these other two are behind and this one's above. So this is how to add dimension to your cards. And this is just Old Olive and Gorgeous Grape. These colors are part of the designer series paper uh, color scheme. I used, believe that is stylus shape styles, and this is just a piece of paper. Okay, now here's the stamp set I used for that. It's called Something Fancy, and the stamp is grateful for the everyday magic in you. So, so far you might be like, hey, I have that stamp set. I have this stamp set. You have this stamp set, right? Crafting with you, because we did this. Many of you have this because this is a stamp set that I spent an entire month on a couple months ago. I need to still photograph those cards, incidentally. But is this perfect for the little girl doing arts and crafts? I think so. Now, one time I did cut off her little paper because I was learning about what to do with the pencil trick, and I thought that would be recognized, and it wasn't, but you can't really tell. So this is the way that the original is supposed to be, and I cut off that little blue piece of paper, but you can just... You'll have that on yours because you're going to use the pencil trick. So this is the little fancy, something fancy dies. I just added a bunch of flowers and hearts and bling. And Poppy prayed and this piece, these two designer series papers and a pool party card. And there's the stamp, Life is Better When You're Crafting. And I used, I guess it was called Berry, Berry Burst, Berry Burst Ink. All right, so that's how you do that one. And then we have another stamp set that you might have from last Easter. Go ahead and pull this one out. Easter Bunny stamp set, you might have it. If not, you could still have this Easter one. You could use this one that says, thinking of you this Easter. When you have the Easter stamp or Happy Easter, you have the little girl with the bunny. It's a perfect Easter card. Pool Party, Poppy Parade, Old Olive, Gorgeous Grape, Piece of DSP, Piece of DSP, The Girl with the Layers, Add Some Bling, and this little new die is from the exclusive, only you can get it if you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber. And the dies are called, I think they're called spring dies, but someone might know the name of these dies. There's three little dies that go with our Paper Pumpkin kits. All right, now then last stamp set, this one's retired. So these four you can get. I don't even know if this retired anymore, but this one is free with celebration. This is in our catalog and this is in our catalog on our website. So this last one, though, unfortunately, only demonstrators were able to get this. And I don't even know if it's still available for demonstrators. But there's a stamp in here that I just thought was perfect for this. It says, Making Dreams Come True. So I made three cards using Making Dreams Come True because these little kids are just using their imagination and letting it run wild. So no, you can't use a Cricut for these guys. The reason we love the scan and cut is because it's, it's a machine that scans and cuts. And no other, no other machine does what a brother scan and cut can do. All right, so making dreams come true. You have your boy dressing up with the, he wants to be, it looks like he's a little robot, right, with his little space shirt on. The little girl with her ladybug. Maybe I'm going to put a ladybug sticker there. That would be cute. And the girl that loves to bake. Okay, so these are three little careers, or you could say three little dreams, making dreams come true. And then here's where I use the scene. Now, I already showed you how to use the scene back here. You can use the sliding board scene. But I just thought this scene was fantastic in the bedroom with the pillows. So I guess a little girl maybe, could be a little boy, playing dress up with the wizard outfit on, the magic wand, and standing on the bed with the dimensionals coming out and gorgeous grape making dreams come true with some bling. Asia afternoon, gorgeous grape. Okay, so you can see that. And now here's how to use the wobble springs. You could take the girl. And the reason I reinforced some of these with the this part here, I was showing you I reinforced some. 
is so that I can put them on wobbles because that way they have dimension and they hold up better than putting a wobble on, than putting the wobble right on the designer series paper. So for here, I put the wobble spring, then two sets of dimensionals, then one set of dimensionals. So they're all different heights. And then I got DSP in the background on a Knight of Navy card with old olive layer, DSP, three layers of DSP, making dreams come true again from the stamping your way to the top. So those are nine card ideas. So is the pets a separate pack of paper? Oh my goodness. Sue, where have you been? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like to give my viewers a hard time sometimes. All right. No, no, no. The pets are not a separate pack of paper. Like here are the six sheets of paper, guys. We have the six sheets are dress up, fantasy, right? Dress up and fantasy with the stars on the back. We have baking with the stripes on the back. We have little kids reading with the lines on the back. We have outdoor activities with the scenes on the back. Scene builders. Look at all these scene builders. Now we have arts and crafts with the great blue on the back. I love this. Pool party and Azure afternoon. And then we have pets with the hearts on the back. And the pets are, of course, all six sheets are part of this pack. So earlier I had done, you see, like I would take, this is what I did earlier before this video. So one pack of paper is going to have 12 sheets of 12 by 12. So, right? So you're going to get six full sheets of kids. That's why I said it's a Brothers Can and Cut's dream. This paper is a dream for Scan and Cut users, especially if you're just getting used to your Scan and Cut because this is the best way to learn the Scan and Cut. You're just going to, you know, just start making cute little shapes and, I mean, how fun. I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with this one, but I, I definitely have, like, some apple stamps or harvest. I just think that's so funny. Look at her face, like, why'd you make me dress up like an apple? It's hilarious. And this little boy's like, I stole a cookie out of the cookie jar, and she's, like, joyous with her thing and he's happy to have a bird on his head these are just fantastic i have a friend rachel she's actually the person who helped me come up with the name papered chef for my business and she has red hair and this reminds me of her like when she was little right so i i definitely want to send her that that's that's just so funny she we she had a pampered chef party at her house and we were like i was selling my cards like i just used to sell christmas cards i've been doing craft fairs for like so many years and I just brought over some stuff to sell at the Pampered Chef party. She invited me over. And then she's like, you're the Pampered Chef and she's the Paper Chef. And that's how I came up with my name. And look at this little girl. She has an attitude. She's like, I don't want to go to sleep. I don't want to go to sleep. And then he's like, joy. Anyway, so there's just endless possibilities. So let me just kind of sum up and tell you what else is going on in my channel. So besides relating, besides being able to relate to everybody in this like, whether you didn't know about this paper or you know about this paper, you should be able to look at every one of these pictures and be like, that reminds me of so-and-so. That reminds me of so-and-so. Like, someone just said, the boy eating popcorn reminds me of their son. This little part got cut out when I scanned it, but that's okay. I can overlap it. I could do a whole bunch of stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. A couple mistakes from cutouts. Here's a little ponytail that got cut off. See, her ponytail got cut off. But then in the next layer, and then this, the first, the bottom layer ripped, so I just glued two together. Now I got her ponytail back, and I reinforced the paper. All right, so whether or not you can relate to somebody in this, or you just want to practice with the scan and cut, or you, you know a teacher to give this to, okay, there are so many things you could do with, these, with this paper after you cut out these. You have teacher bulletin boards. You have scrapbooking pages. Okay, the ones that I showed you are, I mean, these make great scrapbooking pages and scrapbooking layouts, okay? You have, even if you don't even want to use the kids, and you don't even want to cut these out with your scan and cut, this is paper that's free, and you have all these cool patterns on the paper, okay, with cool colors. So, like, even just for that, even if you don't do nothing with the little, the little pieces, right? So, we have bulletin boards, we have embellishments for scrapbooks, we have card making ideas okay we have card ideas and we have relating to the different characters the way we see ourselves in the characters just for fun and just sending them to people and letting them know you think about it or maybe you want to use little things in your planner 
like recreation day, put this on your planner. It means the day that you're going to take off and do something outside, you know, or get more sleep, put her in your planner. So there's just endless amounts of ideas when I see this paper. That's why it's my favorite paper because not only am I, I, I was a teacher, I have all kinds of friends that are teachers, but this is just for me, I love this paper. It makes me happy. And that's what crafting is all about. All right, so I will end there. And on my channel, thank you, Anna, for your comment. And Lisa, for your comment. So on my channel this week, we are also working on Celebration Club. So if you missed the Celebration Club tutorials, I've already done four. And this will be number five. We've already made Easter cards. We've already made this Valentine card. We're going to still make this sympathy card. We're going to make Mother's Day card. We're going to make one more watermelon card. We've already made one of the watermelon cards. We're going to make another one later. We've already made one of the tool cards, and we're going to make another one. So if you missed it, you know, these are all kinds of things you can do with our free products. My channel is full of fun stuff, so we're going to make a Mother's Day card this week. So tune in for that. And we just did last night, we, we kicked off the series for the hot air balloon and we made this card. So if you like hot air balloon, oops, it already come untied. Here's one that's tied up. Hot air balloon series we kicked off. So check that out if you missed that tutorial. That's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. Have a great evening.